Hello everybody and welcome back to this tutorial. So we made this grid and now in the final tutorial we're gonna make sure we make the effect where the cubes is fading in and out. So we'll let's get started. So um, first thing we're gonna do is actually change this set angle well, we can keep it, it's okay. But we, what we need to do is to make a new attribute. So we're gonna make a custom, add a custom attribute. And this one gonna be exactly under the angle because we need to store the rest angle. Because later we need to always know what the default value is because the set angle will eventually in the update be changed. So we could uh, just drag this one in here and we have it saved or we can just do get angle. So what happens here is that we actually, because here we set the angle and in the next row, we just pull the information again and add it to the rest angle. And this is also one way to do it. So for instance, set position and set rest position, you can just do get position and do it like this. So this setup here is the same thing as doing this. Just different ways, ways of doing it. So um, the first thing we're gonna do now is in the update here, we're gonna set the position. <clears throat> so now we set uh, all the pieces to zero, zero, zero. So now the all 400 pieces is in the center, as you see here. And so we're gonna work with the position a little bit. So if we do the uh, get custom attribute and here we do the rest position and it's going to be a vector free so if we set all the rest positions we will have the grid again and sometimes we're going to change it and what i want to do is that i want to do um I want to do a lerp because sometimes we're going to have the rest position and sometimes we're going to have a rest position but with this rest position I'm also going to have some um, noise to it um so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do a per lin noise so the rest position gonna have a per lin noise added to it and uh, let's see if we plug this one in here and now we change this one to one. Now you see, now it's the rest position with some noise on it. So we're gonna, this is good. And uh, also this setup, I want it to have a little bit of, of animation on it. <clears throat> so and I all only gonna do it in one axis so I'm gonna open it up like this and I'm actually gonna do a uh, time VFX time and I'm gonna do the total time and plug it into the Z so now you see it's always moving a bit so now we have this uh, lerp value uh, here going 
this 0 and to 1. And um, the lerp value, now we're finally going to uh, use um, the position from the player. So if we take the player position, and if we take the position, well, we need to do get position. So get attribute position. So if we do like this, if we do a distance, so now we have a distance between the player and uh, for each cube calculating, calculating the distance. So we, what we can do now, if we just do a remap and the values we want to uh, do is, uh, yeah, okay, let's leave it like this. We do zero to one and zero to one. So what we're doing now, we actually, um, and if we do clamping, remember do clamping as well. So if we plug this one in here, why isn't this working as I wanted? Let's see. So it's working, but the thing is, what we want to do, we want to measure. Um, so whenever we want an area where nothing is moving, so nothing is moving is the rest position here. So then we need to have the value zero. So before we want to make sure you have the clamp here. So before you start to, um, measure it you want it to start first at uh, let's say if you drag this one up do one here so we we don't want to start to measure before the value is one so if we do zero and one here so the point is the further up we drag the old range the longer it is before the zero value is starting to become one. So what we want to do here is if we do a float, we can do this as a distance start scale. And then we can just do a um, distance full scale. So let's say we do a range on these two. So this start is going to be a value from 0 to 20. And the same one here. And we're going to do a default value. So it's going to be, value is going to be 1 here. And it's going to be 3 here. So what's happening now is um, <clears throat> when this distance starts scale. Actually, if we, we need to reverse these two down here. Oh, I'm sorry to confuse all the time. Um, so actually it's going to be zero and one here, as you can see. So distance start scale is one. That means when the Distance is one. That's when it start first. We're gonna begin to kind of affect, and then when the range is free, then it's fully one. So that's how we made the set position. So this part here is gonna be the position part, and now we need to set the size. And um, we're going to have a lerp for this one too. And it's going to be so much easier. So what we're going to have is to get size. Uh, 
actually box size. So if we just plug, uh, let's see, this is the lerp value and it's between zero and one. So whenever the value is zero, which means uh, zero means it's inside the walking area, then we need a box size. And whenever the value is one, that means this one input, then it's going to be zero. So it kind of disappear. So here you see now it's working. So this one is actually our lerp, um, lerp value. And this is our, this is our, uh, let's see. Yeah, this is our position. Set position. So this is our position part, and this is the lerp value, and this is our set size. And the last part we're going to do, we're also going to do set angle. Because now you see they are kind of, they are, it's nice like this. But if we add some um, angle to it, now we set the angle zero, zero, zero. So now you see they are all having the same angle. But if I remove it, they will have the default value here. So what you just need to do with this part is to do, uh, again, a lerp. And this is going to be get rest angle. So we need to get custom attribute. And here it's going to be rest angle, and it's going to be a float. And if we plug this one in here, so zero uh, actually into the S. So zero represent the rest angle. And one. When the uh, one, then we have zero, zero, zero. So it's actually a, a difference between them. So this is how it works. So let's play it and see if it works as we want it. Oh yeah, it works. So I'm gonna add the scene here and the game here and let's see what we have and it's working Woohoo! super cool so if you want to have some really cool effect like this then here you are. I find it really cool. So, of course, there is some more tweaking we could do with it. But um, let's leave it for this. So I'm just going to go through it one more time to show what kind of things we did. So in the beginning, we did this uh, grid size. And because of, uh, if we have the half size, we need a double amount. So then we do the grid size times the box size, in this case, a half unit. So then it's the double amount. And uh, we sort the amount of particles. Here we do the angle. So I do the, this is uh, because we have ceiling, this uh, random number, we will yield zero, one, two, three. So it's four different values. And we multiply it with 90, so we get four different steps on the rotation. And we don't have constant, so it's going to be a different value on each axis. So we do it here. And then we have the position. So this part here is the position. 
So we take the grid size and the box size. So we know how many it's going to be on each row. And then we do the mod modulo and uh, make the X value here. And then we do the divide here and floor to do the Z. And the floor is to make sure we do whole integers and not the float value like 1 comma 1 or 1 comma 2. And then we do the subtract one and multiply by a half to get them um, to center. So this is the center, the grid part. And then because we have, um, we need to scale it down with the box size. And also here we do the offset to lower the grid down so we can walk on it. And here we have the position and we add some noise to it. And then we do a lerp to have the rest position or the rest position with some noise. And then we do the size, it's just a, between box size and zero. And angle is also rest angle at a zero. And here we do the player pos position, distance with the particles. And then we, we remap with the clamp. So here we do the distance start scale is first after the distance is more than one it will start to do the lerp value and all the way up to three. So yeah, this is it. So I really hope you like this part. So thank you so much for watching.